الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear respected salafis so inshallah we're going to study together inshallah one of the aspects of the aspect of the days of ignorance from the work from the great work of the Imam Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala the Sheikh said the 17th aspect ascribing falsehood to the prophets نسبة باطلهم إلى الأنبياء كقولهم وما كفر كقوله وما كفر سليمان وقوله ما كان إبراهيم يهوديا ولا نصرانيا. They ascribe their falsehood to the prophets, as is found in Allah's saying, and Sulaiman did not disbelieve. سورة البقرة. آية 102. And he's saying Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. Surat Ali Imran 67. Our Sheikh Al-Allama, Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan Al-Fuzan, Habibullah Ta'ala, he said, from the ways of the people of the days of ignorance, is that they would ascribe what they were upon of disbelief and misguidance to the Prophet's examples of this are when the Jews ascribe sorcery, Sihr wal Billah, to Sulaiman. Saying magic is from the act of Sulaiman. He is the one who would use it to gain power over the jinn and the devils. These people don't realize that the jinn are a creation of Allah, which he subjects, subjects how he wills. Allah is the one who made them subservient to his prophet Sulaiman, peace be upon him. So these Jews attributed sorcery to Sulaiman because they really intended to spread it to the people. So they would say, this is from the actions of the prophets. Likewise, the Jews and the Christians attribute their disbelief to Ibrahim, the leader of the sincere worshippers, the father of the prophets. They ascribe what they are upon of disbelief to him, saying, this is the religion of Ibrahim, and this is why Allah refuted them, saying, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ So the translated notes here, Allah refutes the claims of the Jews and the Christian. Each one invented their own religion, and then ascribed them to certain prophets, such as the Jews, when they described their magic to Sulaiman. And the Christians, when they ascribe their false religion to Ibrahim, so Allah clarified the reality of the matter in 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 these two ayat. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Ibrahim, meaning which Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian, rather he was a true, sincere Muslim, worshiping Allah alone, and he was not from the polytheists. Surah Ali Imran. This was the religion of Ibrahim. He adhered to the religion of Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, and freed himself from polytheism. And the polytheistic, contrary to what the Jews and the Christians are upon. And this is the reality, Ikhwan. When you look at the, well, what they're upon, it's something else. And that's why it is not permissible for Muslims to call to unity of religions like the Ikhwan Muslimin do. Or what they call it, they call it interfaith dialogue. And it is very um, common here in the West. It's very common here in the West. One Muslimin, they do this, uh, they, they call it interfaith dialogue, where they have a rabbi, they have a Jewish rabbi, then they have a Christian priest, they may even have a Hindu priest as well. And they have one imam from the imams of the Ikhwan Muslimin. And then they will uh, say, uh, let's, uh, you know, talk about things that we have in common and things like that. But we have not seen any of the rabbis and the priests come into Islam. We've never seen anything like that. So this is not permissible at all. Because if you try to do that, then you are mixing up the truth with falsehood. How can you mix al-Iman with al-Kufr? Or how can you mix a tawheed with shirk? It's impossible. As Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan said, 
He said these individuals, they want to combine between the lizard and the whale. And it's not going to happen because the lizard can never uh, be combined with the whale. The whale lives in the ocean and the lizard lives on land. So there is no way that you can combine between the lizard and the whale. Likewise, you can never, you, you will never be able to reconcile between al-Iman and al-Kufr. There is no way that you can reconcile. It's either Iman or it is Kufr. One of the two. So they cannot come together. They, you cannot bring them together. So Ikhwan Muslimin, they wanted to bring that which cannot be brought together. That which cannot be, be reconciled. That which cannot be combined. So this is a very evil call and they spend a lot of money on this this evil call, which is the call of the unity of religions, or sometimes they even play trickery and they say, this is Dawat Ibrahim السلام, This is the call, Abrahamic faith. They call it Abrahamic faith. But the reality, it is not. It is not. Because Ibrahim السلام, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about him in the Quran, ما كان Ibrahim Ibrahim Yahudiyan ولا Nasraniyan ولكن كان حنيفا مسلما وما كان من وما كان من المشركين. Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. Rather, he was a true, sincere Muslim, worshiping Allah alone. So that's what Muslim means. Muslim means someone who worships Allah alone, the one who singles out Allah subhanahu wa taala in his lordship, his worship, his names and attributes. This is a Muslim. This is a true Muslim, not the one was trying to combine between the lizard and the whale, trying to combine between that which cannot be combined, that which cannot be reconciled. You can never reconcile between al-kufr wal iman, al-tawheed wa shirk. They can never be reconciled. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the meaning of which Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. So this is a refutation against the Jews and the Christians and also against the Ikhwan Muslimin because the Khwan Muslimin, they're politically driven. They're politically driven. So they're looking for political gains and worldly gains. So they compromise the religion. They compromise al aqidah the affairs of al-wala wal bara They compromise those matters. Those are very, those are serious matters that we have to be very careful uh, when we hear that there is somebody who called to the interfaith dialogue and stuff like that. We have to refute that. We have to uh, reject that and we have to educate the Muslims not to uh, attend uh, such conferences or seminars, whatever the case is. Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian, rather he was a true sincere Muslim worshipping Allah alone and he was not from the polytheist, he was not from the polytheist. This was the religion of Ibrahim, he adhered to the religion of Tawheed, oneness of Allah, and freed himself from polytheism and the polytheistic contrary to what the Jews and the Christians are upon. And this is the reality. This is the reality. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he said about the Jews, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ بْنُ اللَّهِ And the Jews, they said, Uzair is the son of Allah. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذلك. So they attributed to Allah uh, that which is a serious crime. A serious accusation that they ascribe the son to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah it does not befit his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a son Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surat al-ikhlas lam yalid wa lam yulad so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he he beget not nor was he begot so it does not befit his, his majesty to have children it befits us as a human being as the creation of Allah we need it. Allah does not need that because Allah is a summit, the self-sufficient master, subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom all the creation needs him, but he does not need anyone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not befit his majesty. So now you want to combine between the lizard and the whale. Now you're going to have interfaith dialogue with those who say that Uzair is the son of Allah. And you want I have a dialogue with those who say Isa is the son of Allah and you want to have a dialogue with the Hindus also worship millions of 
of, of false gods and goddesses? How can you combine between the lizard and the whale? Subhanallah. This should be the one coming to us, asking us questions about Islam. We should not be going to them, going to their synagogue, going to their, you know, to their churches. And this is what the Muslim, the Ikhwan Muslims do today. They even send Muslim kids to the synagogue. They send them to the churches. And this is very dangerous because now you kill in al-wala wal bara. You kill in al-wala wal bara wal billah. So there is no difference now. When they go, when they go to the synagogue and they go to the churches, they get confused. They're gonna get confused because if they don't have a strong foundation from the beginning, then they're gonna get confused. They're gonna start believing that everyone is okay. All of them are gonna go to Jannah. You see, there is no difference between us and them. You see, this is how dangerous this call is. It's a very wicked call. It's very dangerous because it kills al wala wal bara. It kills lo loving and hating for the sake of Allah. It kills it. Na'udhu billah min dali. So this is the this this is the call of Ikhwan al muflisin today. All over the West, they have this call. Uh, where they call it Abrahamic faith, or they call it interfaith uh, dialogue, or uh, they 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 call it Wahdat uh, al the unity of religion. And there's a fatwa by the permanent committee of lifta refuting that and warning against this warning muslims against the, the unity of religions the sheikh he said also judaism and christianity did not come about until centuries after ibrahim السلام, so how can judaism and christianity be ascribed to him this is one of the most despicable lies History even denies this, since there exist many centuries between Ibrahim and them. The Torah was not sent down to Musa and the gospel was not sent down to Isa until after Ibrahim, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ahl al-kitab, lima tuhajjuna fi Ibrahim, wa ma unzilat al-tawrat wal-injilu illa min ba'di, afala ta'qilun. O people of the scripture, why did you, do you dispute? about Ibrahim, when the Torah and the gospel were not revealed till after him. Have you then no sense? Surah Al-Imran. And he also says, All food was lawful to the children of Israel, except for what Israel made unlawful for himself before the Torah was revealed. Surah al -Imran. So the same applies in this nation of Muslims to everyone that ascribe the falsehood he is upon to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, thus fabricating false hadith in order to support his falsehood. So likewise, the Shaykh is saying, this does not only apply to the Jews and Christians. Yes, it does apply to them and we have clear cut evidence at the same time. At the same time, the people of Bid'ah, the people of innovation, because they attribute so many things to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it is a lie. Like, like the Sufiya, for example, uh, the, the Tijani Sufi order, they attribute uh, what they call uh, Dua Al-Fatih Lima Ughliq. Al-Fatih Lima Ughliq. And the Attribute this to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is a clear lie, despicable lie, that you attribute uh, al bida innovation to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, those who attribute the hadith, the, which is fabricated to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say the Messenger of Allah said this, they lie upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Whoever lies upon me intentionally, they let him prepare his seat in the hellfire. And may Allah protect us from that condition. May Allah protect us from that condition. So anyone who attributes anything to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is not from the deen of Islam, then he's lying upon Allah. He's lying upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
like the people of Bid'ah. And that's why you see the civility of innovations. And that's why Sufyan ibn Sa'id, al-Tawri rahimahullah, he said, إن البدعة أحب إلى إبليس من المعصية المعصية يتاب منها والبدعة لا يتاب منها Indeed, uh, innovation is much dearer to Iblis than the sin because the sin you repent from it there is no one who commits a sin and feel good about it unless this person's heart is dead, completely dead but in general, the people when they commit a sin, they feel guilty and they feel the urge to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness. And like al bidah and like the innovation. Because the innovator, he believes that he's doing something good. That Allah will reward him for it. How is he going to leave it? How is he going to abandon something that he believes that it is from Islam? He believes Allah will reward him for it. You see how dangerous it is when some, someone innovates in the religion. And the innovation spreads out like wildfire. All it takes is going on a social media platform. That's it. Go on Instagram, go on WhatsApp, on any uh, social media platform. And once it spreads out, it, it, go, it spreads like wildfire. You see how dangerous it is, especially today with the, with, 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 with the access of social media. Anyone can access go on WhatsApp or go on Google or, or YouTube or something like that, and he will find someone talking about a bid'ah that has nothing to do with, with the religion of Islam or a fabricated hadith, fabricated story or something like that. And before you know it, everyone reads it. Everyone hears that. And then other people, they carry it around and circulate it to others, and it becomes the talk of the town, the talk of the, the whole country. Subhanallah, you see how dangerous it is to indulge in those things in al bidah wal muhdatat in newly invented matters. And you see how the scholars they try to safeguard the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, defending the sharia from anything that is innovation, newly invented matters. And even before the al bidah started. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to warn against them even though they were not there. They were not even there. And he used to warn against them Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It shows you the severity of this affair. He used to say on the minbar on Yom Al-Jumu'ah on Friday, he used to say used to say sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst of the affairs and that are the newly invented matters and for every newly invented matter is an innovation and every innovation is misguidance and every misguidance leads to the hellfire so he used to warn against the bidah and innovation and newly invented matters even though they were not at his time sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were no bidah at the time of the messenger of allah وسلم, but yet he warned against the bid'ah because they are very dangerous. They spread to like wildfire and only the ulama refute the bid'ah. Only the ulama establish the sunnah upon the creation. They are the one that establish the sunnah. And when the sunnah is established, then the bid'ah vanishes. When you have the ulama, then the bid'ah they will vanish. But when you don't have the ulama, and you have al-juhal, you have uh, the, the ignorant ones, then what's going to happen, al-bida'ah, they will spread out. As uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiyallahu an, that he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, inna Allah ala this is tremendous hadith the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said 
that Allah does not take away knowledge. He does not snatch away knowledge from uh, the people just like that. No, he snatches away knowledge and he takes away knowledge by taking away the lives of the scholars, by taking away the lives of the scholars until there is no scholar alive. Then what would happen? The people they will take as leaders, ignorant ones, ignorant ones, and they will be they will be asked questions uh, in, 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 in regards to religious verdicts. So they will be asked questions in regard to religious verdicts. So they will they will issue the wrong fatwa, the wrong religious verdicts. So they will they will misguide themselves. And they will misguide others you see how dangerous it is when you speak without knowledge because when you speak without knowledge then you will be lying upon allah you will be lying upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam because you're saying this is halal and it is not halal it's haram or you're saying this is haram while it is halal you're speaking without knowledge or it's not or it's even makru or or permissible or something like that but you're saying something else. See how dangerous it is. Sheikh said, likewise, this goes to those Muslims that ascribe themselves to the poor Imams while differing with them in matters of Aqeedah. And this is very, uh, Ikhwan, this is very common. You find some people, they are upon the, the, the madhab of Imam Hanifa in Fiqh. But they are, for example, Mu'tazila. Or they are a Sha'ira in Aqeedah. So now they're different with the Imam. The Imam, he was not upon the Aqeedah of Mu'tazila. He was not upon the Aqeedah of Al-Ashairah or Al-Kullabiyya. Then how come you are following the Aqeedah of Al-Ashairah or Al-Mu'tazila or Al-Kullabiyya, but you're following the, 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 the Madhab of Abu Hanifa in Fiqh? Why don't you follow the whole Madhab, the, the, the Madhab of the Imam in Aqeedah as well? Why do you have to pick and choose? And take only what your whims and desire, uh, what, what suits your whims and desires. Why don't you take everything from the Imam? Likewise, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, some, some, many of the people, they attribute themselves to the madhab of Imam Malik. They say, we are Malikiyah. We are Malikiyah. But at the same time, you find that this individual is upon the tariq al naqshbandiyya الطريقة السهرة وردية الطريقة الجشتية الطريقة التجانية الطريقة المريدية you see was the Imam uh, Malik like that did he ascribe himself to the Tijani Sufi order did he uh, ascribe himself to any of these deviant sects the Sufi deviant sect none then why don't you take everything from the Imam Malik don't pick and choose don't pick and choose Whatever suits your desire, you take it. But, but when it comes to the matters of belief, you don't follow Imam Mali. And you claim that you do, but you're not. Actually, in reality, this is just a claim, but it's not, it's not true. Likewise, those who follow Imam Shadi, Imam, uh, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahimahullah, anyone who follows the four madah, if he does not follow the Imam, in matters of belief, then this person is lying. He's lying. Because if you are a true followers of that Imam, you follow the Aqeedah of that Imam. Because the Aqeedah of the Imam is the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah al Jamaah. Now, the Shaykh he said, now, so for example, they ascribe themselves to Abu Hanifa Malik and Shafi and Ahmed. But yet they are upon the creed of, of Al Mu'tazila, Al Ashairah. And they go ahead and ascribe this false creed. To the Imams of the Salaf, see, this is what dangerous it is. Now, when you ascribe yourself to Al Mu'tazila and you accuse the Salaf to be upon the Aqeedah of the Atizan, or you, 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 you are upon, you ascribe, you ascribe yourself to uh, Al Ashaira, and then you, 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 you ascribe this madhab of, of the Atiqad, this deviant madhab of the Atiqad to the A'imma of the Salaf. This is a lie. You're lying upon this a'imma. You're lying upon them. These noble imams, may Allah have mercy on, her, on them, were not Mu'tazila. Rather, they would wage war against the Mu'tazila and the scholars of rhetoric. This is what they were upon. 
You find this in the books of Al-Aqaid. You find the statement of those Imams. <coughs> you find those Imams, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, Ahmed, Sufyan ibn Sa'id al-Tawri, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, Al-Layth ibn Sa'ad, Hamad ibn Zayd, Hamad ibn Salama, and others from the Imams of the Salaf, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, you find that they refute Al-Mu'tazila, and they refute Al-Ashairah, and they refute Al-Murji'ah, Al-Qadariyah, Al-Jabriyah, Al-Sufiyah, and other than that, Al-Khawaris, and other than them, you find that they refute them. So those Imams, they were not upon what you're upon. So if you say Imam Abu Hanifa, or Imam Malik, or Imam Shafi'i, or Imam Ahmed, they were upon the Aqeedah of Al-Mu'tazila, you're lying upon those Imams. You're lying upon them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide those who are misguided. And may Allah make us firm upon the truth. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.